Hey guys, Vice Bump here, bringing you this 10.2 Frost Death Knight Mythic Plus guide. Today I will cover everything you need to know to excel in the Mythic Plus environment as a Frost Death Knight in 10.2. I have a uh, plus 19, um, what's it called again? Throne of Tides, there we go. Playing in the background, you can follow along with my rotation up here that shows you the buttons I just pressed. That is not a gearly, those are the buttons I'm pressing. So you can actually kind of you know tell okay what am i prioritizing what am i pressing to do this kind of damage today i will cover uh, talents gear rotations and cooldowns to kind of give you the, the full package to just go into dungeons and then hit those big juicy obliterates because this will be an obliteration with plus guide obliteration is just much better in general terms breakfast and goza just doesn't cut it unless you're like a really coordinated group that can chain pull packs breath is tuned around having 100 percent off time and that is just not possible in a myth plus environment so the short big burst damage windows from obliteration just fits really well anyway to start off let's talk about talents so in this run i'm running the build you can see up there which is the no frostworm fury build and with the new, it's it's run the new test sets. So you have chill streak in there. Uh, this is a viable build. If you're running the new four piece, uh, this is going to be like the the best highest simming one in a dungeon slice sim, for instance. However, running two piece, two piece, a so two piece from the old tier and two piece in a new one is also very much viable, and it seems a bit higher. In that scenario, you would do one. Uh, enduring strength into frost and fury so you will run fury, fury in that case there is also a scenario here where we actually pick up the uh, enduring chill so the uh, chill streak extra talent there you would sacrifice the one point in uh, enduring strength for that so a couple of options we can kind of uh, swap around i'm also running my uh, defensive version of this build so like i have uh, will of necropolis that's obviously a dps downgrade but you did do get significantly more tanky so i quite like it but it's up to you do you feel like you need to be more tanky or not do you feel like you fail and need the defensive up to you those are kind of the options we'll see how it ends up in the end if we're going to do two piece two piece or the new four piece whatever how we're actually going to allocate your points but i'm quite liking not having to deal with frost and shiri and you do do a bit more uh, single target damage so it's nice for tyrannical weeks like the one we have now right let's talk about gear so um we want to talk about trinkets we want to talk about embellishments as a general rule here and weapon weapon is, is easy two-hander is best by far you're not gonna want to use anything else right this build relies heavily on obliterate cleaving and with might have frozen wasters Two-hander just does that much better. When it comes to trinkets, you generally want to run double passive. That give secondary stats, some, some kind of stats. There are quite a lot of trinkets that are good in raid that do like raw damage. Don't want those. You want the secondary stat ones. The top ones are, let's see, I have a list here. So pips, good. Cedric and Sandglass, good. Porcelain Crab is also good. And gore crossed and nightmare eggshell also good so any two out of those four or five how much did i say one two three any two out of those five just fine all right you can go with that when it comes to embellishments it's a bit tricky so the legs that provide haste are obviously nice because they synergize very well with your obliteration windows you you do a lot of upfront damage in that initial 12 seconds so having haste for that really good however if you have like mythic legs which are a couple of eye levels higher you do lose a bit of a, lose out a bit of the stats there so a bit tricky you do want to burst wrists always good anything with blue silicon is a good idea so for instance a cloak with blue silicon good option lariat is also a really nice option so a couple of things there pick two out of those do a bit of sims see what fits your character that kind of vibe when it comes to stats which obviously are part of gear you want a good balance of stats. Essentially, if you have the same raw amount of haste, mastering, crit, and then kind of as little versatility as you can, that's a good spot to be in. Again, you can use Daniel Slice to sim yourself, but as a general rule, that's what you're looking for, right? 
you can kind of choose, for instance, which rune you pick on your pick on your weapon, like hissing rune or blasting rune, one of those. Pick that to kind of balance out your stats. Furthermore, you have a bit of a break point. So just above 20% haste. It's I think it's literally 20% haste, but you want to want might want to go a bit higher. Uh, you get another GCD in your uh, pillar of frost window. So do try and uh, reach that point. You don't use pillar of definite K on um, single target, which means you want to get a bit more haste for that. As a general rule, right? Don't follow this blindly. 25, 26%. That's what you're aiming for. Ish. Okay. Trust the sims. They will tell you what to get. Right. Great. So that's stats. That's talents. Let's talk about the rotation. Because that's I think that's what we came from. That's the biggest impact you can personally have when actually doing a move class dungeon. That's where you'd optimize your damage, right? Let's start with a high level overview. How does the Frost Death Knight deal damage in a move class environment? Well, it's primarily from a single source, obliterates, and is cleaving obliterates that matter. Okay? So the whole gameplay here is about getting as many big obliterates that cleave. You get cleaving by putting death and K, you have the cleaving strike talent, that makes your obliterate cleaves. They do dip big damage by getting kill machines, which is your uh, uh, proc. You either get that from crit autos, or you get that from your obliteration talent. That's why you run obliteration to guarantee those killing machine procs. So, the general vibe is going to be to leverage obliteration talent with definite K to just get loads and loads of killing machine obliterate cleaving in AoE. Alright? That's your primary source. Secondary source of damage, Remorseless Winter, deals a ton of AoE damage. And Glacial Advance. This is talent we pick up, it's your runic power to spend in AoE. It just uh, deals a lot of damage, especially on the big target counts. Okay, that's a high level. Let's talk about how we execute that in reality. So first of all, let's cover the death and decay window or the obliteration window. So when you pick up obliteration talent, your pillar frost gets converted in this, into this powerhouse. That means that you have loads of abilities that generate killing machine procs for you. So Glacial Advance does it, Howling Blast does it, um, so Reaper does it, don't use that, but Frost Strike does it as well. And the whole idea is then to use your Tiller Frost and then generate these killing machines using those abilities and then consume them with your Obliterates. In reality, that's going to be hitting Pillar, generating two killing machine procs, hitting your Definite K, so that's the third UCD, and then starting hitting those killing machine Obliterates to cleave. It's very important that every single GCD here either generates a proc killer machine or consumes one. That's the whole idea here. So generate, consume, generate, consume, generate, consume. Right? That's how you do it. Let's talk about the, intrin the intrinsic parts here, or the, the um, advanced bits. So, which killer machine generator do you choose? In an AoE environment, you're either going to press Glacial Advance or Howling Blast. As a general rule, Glacial Advance is used whenever you need to either stack up or refresh your Unleashed Frenzy buff. That gives you strength. It has 10 second duration and you need to spend Runic Power. We actually need to deal damage with Runic Power to refresh it. So if that's about to roll off or you need to actually stack it up, stacks up to three, press Glacial Advance. In all other circumstances, you prioritize the Brian procs, so pressing Howling Blast. All right, sometimes you don't have that choice. Sometimes you will have that choice. Depends whether or not you get procs, right? That's the general priority between those two. We also have the fact now that you can get double kill machines. They stack up with the uh, Fatal Fixation talent. By the way, if you want to get my weak aura, you see I get like two of the kill machine things there. It's in the description, right? So just get it from there and uh, start running it. I love it. Very intuitive. But yeah, you can pick that out if you want. Now, we sometimes actually want to go up to two killing machine procs. Generally, double killing machine just gives you more leeway. It means that if you get a natural killing machine proc, you don't immediately waste it because you already had one, right? However, sometimes you actually want to manual, you actually want to go up to two killing machine. This happens when either you want to prioritize stacking up 
your leashed frenzy. So if you're stacking it up or you refresh it and you have a killing machine proc, you still hit glacial dance. Because that gives you to two, so you don't waste anything. And you still, you know, you, you get your uh, buff rolling, which is what you want. The other scenario is when you get rhyme procs. If you have a single killing machine proc and you have a rhyme proc, you can consume the rhyme, get to two stacks of killing machine, and, you know, you're completely fine. This will, on average, lead to wasting some killing machine procs, because any natural proc you get when that two stacks will just go away. However, it's still worthwhile to do it. Oh, Jesus Christ. I'm getting knocked up all over the time. You know, thank you, Will and Acropolis. Bandaging bad play. Anyway, that's your uh, Pillar Frost window. Let's talk about all the other stuff. So we have a couple of cooldowns we need to keep track of. Remorseless Winter and Chill Streak with a new test set. Remorseless Winter has a really high priority and should be used whenever it comes off cooldown. If you're in a Pillar Frost window, press it. Even a single target, just press it. It's better to just use it ASAP than to hold it for like, you know, some other window, whatever, right? That's how we do that. Chill streak, similar vibe there. So um, just press this whenever it's up. You might think that you want to hold that for like your pillar windows. Obviously that's great synergy because you get like a damage buff. The pillar will buff the damage to chill streak. Loads of good stuff in there. However, if you start holding it, you will lose so many casts. It is not worthwhile to do so. So, as a general rule, just press those on cooldown all the time. Whoops. I think I was doing something else there. I hope this run is good, by the way. I had, I, I did have a couple of bears before that point, so. But I felt good, so I think it's uh, good enough for a video. <laughs> anyway. That's your kind of uh, pillar window. That's your cooldowns. Let's cover the opener for any given pack, right? What do you actually do when you initiate on a pack? Well, you essentially go into the pillar window almost as soon as possible. You use Abomination Limb if you have it. That needs to go before the pillar window. You then follow up with Remorse's Winter. Use that early so you have time to stack it up and start dealing damage with it. You then use Chill Streak if you have it. We want to use Chill Streak after Remorses because it costs a rune which buffs Remorses through the Gathering Storm talent. After this point, you hit your Pillar and Howling Blast together. Generate the first Killing Machine. You then go Glacial Advance generally to get your second Killing Machine, Definite K, and then start cleaving. That's the vibe. I'll put it up here so you can see it clearly. And then you just do that for every single pack. If you get a natural killing machine proc before you use the two GCDs in your pillar window, I would just pop down Definite K with that a bit early. I need to double check this in simulations, but I've been thinking about this for a while. And essentially, it makes sense. The fact that we delay Definite K is to make sure that our final GCD in our pillar window cleaves. That's like the strongest obituary we have. If your Definite K runs out too early, it won't cleave and it's a bit sad. Bit sad. However, the alternative is to spend that GCD generating a new proc of Killing Machine, pop down a new Defend K after your pillar window, and then go for a secondary burst window. This is what you generally want to do anyway, like that secondary Defend K. You have two charges of Defend K, you can afford to sometimes use a second one. Not every single one, every time, but if you start the initial window with two charges of Defend K, you are safe to use the second one afterwards. And you want to do that because after a pillar, you get lots of stots buff rolling you have like frost well last for a couple of seconds still you have enduring strength it's a major one gives a lot of strength after pillar and you might have a power root weapon rolling that kind of thing so you always want to use any secondary death in case after and if you then spend the last couple of gcds in your pillar window generating killer machine procs you can then immediately spend that next death in k windows cleaving with them that's the idea after all of this you're not going to do that much, honestly. You do small damage, but what you do is you spend your rune power on Glacial Advance, you refresh remorse when it comes up, you spend your uh, runes on Obliterate, and your rhymes of proc on Howling Blast. Simple and easy. That's not the major part of your damage. Your major part of damage comes from Deck Fitting Care Window, so don't worry too much about everything going out outside of those, because the priority is much easier. All right, so... If you do choose to run with Frosting Fury, how do you use it? Well, you want to use it towards the end of your pillar windows. Pillar stacks up strength over time when you use your runes, so using towards the end gives you the biggest strength buff. 
that's when you use it. Furthermore, in the pillar windows, when you plan to use Frostworm, you actually don't need to do this whole business of doing double GCD before Death and Decay. Death and Decay can then come always the second GCD instead of the third one, because you know the final GCD and pillar will be Worm, so I'm completely fine with not having Death and Decay up during that GCD. Absolute final call I'm going to talk about and primary weapon. Use this in conjunction with pillar. Okay. In AoE, it's good to use it straight just before pillar, especially when you have secondary definite K windows, because then you get much better overlap with those. In single target, you can just use it anytime, like up to 10 seconds before pillar, honestly, and you still get perfect overlap. So that's completely fine there. All right. That's the AoE. That's how we do it. That's how we get really big up the traits and do good overall damage. The single target rotation is really simple. You only you have frost strike instead of glacial advance. Easy piece. That's just how you spend your ruling power. Your your uh, pillar frost windows are just like your pillar frost windows in AOE. However, we don't use death and decay, so you literally just go in, generate killer machine, spend it, generate, spend, generate, spend, so on. Prioritize stacking up your Unleashed Frenzy. Otherwise, use a Rhyme Procs. That's pretty much it. Bit of fun thing you can do. Glacial Advance does have a use case in single target. Whenever you're away from the boss, hit Glacial Advance to hit the boss from a distance. Right? Free damage. Also, when you initiate on the boss, it doesn't have five stacks of Razor Eyes. So the first couple of Runic Power Spenders will be Glacial Advance, because that doesn't do that much less damage than Frost Strike and gives you stacks of Razor Eyes. I don't do it right here, but it's definitely something you can do. Cool. I think that covered everything, hopefully, and it wasn't too uh, kind of uh, all over the place. As I said, focus on your Pillar of Frost windows. Make sure you pop down Death and K at the right spot. Generate consume Pillar Killer Machines. That's how you do damage. Keep your most winter ticking at all times. Use your shield streak whenever it comes up. That's frost deck DK. Leverage your second and K windows when you want to be fancy about it. There you go. Now, hopefully, I won't randomly come up with a new topic to talk about at this point. So the rest of this dungeon will be commentary. Where I talk about my own gameplay. So we can discuss the cooldowns I use. How I thought about them. That kind of thing. Uh... I might also come up with a new topic to talk about, so who knows? If you want to, you know, get the opportunity to see that, stay tuned. <laughs> anyway, we have completed the majority of dungeon here. 18 minutes in, we are just going to kill two more bosses. This boss has a couple of good tips. So, first of all, he summons the uh, totems that we need to deal with. We definitely want to make sure we leverage our Death and K cleave on those. It's just free damage. So whenever the totem is down, we're going to pop down definite K. So our obliterates do cleave. It's also quite nice to have our pillar ready. So we send that, put down our definite K, and then we get some nice cleave going here. Let's see, I need to make sure I can see the rotation. There we go. Okay. Other than that, there's not my many tips on this fight and uh, until we get into the final phase where you can use AMS to uh, immune the fear, as you will see. Other than that, you know, swap to the totem, pop on definite K, make sure we get some nice cleave as possible. That's it. If you get if you get targeted with the flame chalk, it does a ton of initial damage, by the way. So that's where like the majority of the danger comes from. But it's a good idea to pop AMS still to uh, make sure you're tanky and do not die from the ticking damage. You can see there, I'm away from the boss. I hit some uh, Glacier Advance for some free damage. You can see also here, I have my weak chorus there. So like my uh, shield streak. I have, uh, like it lights up when it's ready. So I remember to press it, that kind of thing. I didn't have AMS ready for the first hide. So I had to go behind a pillar as you do to uh, LOS that one. But the next one, if we do get it, I will uh, definitely use it. And now I remember something I wanted to cover. Pillar macros, what are those about? So um, I really need to get to using those, I don't do personally. However, 
When you initiate your pillar window, you want to generate the first killing machine as soon as possible. You can do that by pressing pillar and then immediately press another button, right? That will generate one within 0.1, 0.2 seconds for me personally. I've looked at my logs to see that. However, the optimal way is to macro pillar frost into the different generators you use so that you literally get them at the same instance. So it, the macro goes pillar frost into like glacial advance and then you don't get no delay at all. What this does is fits you a couple more GCDs inside your pillars on average in the entire dungeon. And it also means that simulations will be more accurate because the sims will assume that you do it properly, which is essentially pillar into killing machine generator ASAP. So I'll put them up here. In uh, AUE, as a general rule, in Mythic Class, you need three of these. So one for Howling Blast when you get Ryan Procs, right? One for Frost Strike on the single target pit, and one for Glacial Advance when you generate those in AUE. Technically, you need two more, but I don't think we need to cover those. Like, you can do one with Obliterate on single target if you want to initiate your pillar window with an Obliterate. It does happen if you have a killer machine to start off, if you want to use a pillar killer machine. You want to do pillar obliterate immediately. And if you're running Soul Reaper, you would also put that as a macro. But we don't need to care about that because we don't do that move class anyway. Anyway, uh, these will substitute or these will like extend your pillar frost keybinds. So all of these are like different ways of initiating your pillar frost. Remember, you need to do this on an empty GCD. Otherwise, you kind of waste the purpose of them. If you have do not have an empty GCD, what happens is that pillar will activate and then you will generate the killer machine when your GCD becomes available so you still get that kind of little delay. So empty GCD, press the macro, it generates your pillar, your killer machine immediately. That's the best kind of value. All right, whoever you guys to stay, who stayed, they thought, yeah, surely you forgot something to talk about, you know, congratulations. There you go. <laughs> Anyway, back to the dungeon. We are now killing these tainted sentries. Um, AMS is really good here. So the little guys, when they die, they give you this uh, debuff that increases your shadow damage you take. And the tainted sentry as well does shadow damage. But AMS just immunes that debuff. So you're kind of chilling. Your entire group is dying. Great tip for staying alive. All right, we're going to kill this aqua dude. You can see I have a killer machine, a pillar window coming here. Interestingly, I didn't do... Did, oh, did I get a proc or killer machine, maybe? I don't know. My definite K was one GCD earlier, which I'm not too sure why. But who knows? This affix, when you get stunned, you can AMS that, which I thought I had active there. But, you know, obviously not. You can also IBF if you do get stunned, but that wasn't available. I think I used it on the swell a bit earlier. All right, got these two sentries. You're going to sit now, chill streak, remorseless winter, Abomination Limb, get our stuff going. We have our Pillar coming up soon. So we're going to get ready to use that. Pillar, we have double Killer Machine, so we give you a definite K. Now we do the whole obliteration rotation where you consume generate Killer Machines. I have a secondary definite K window coming here. Probably won't use it though, because, um, yeah, it wasn't enough cleave left to go. Actually. I should have used it because these guys just spawn small dudes when they die. Anyway, final topic that I thought to discuss that I forgot to discuss. <laughs> Remorseless Winter and Gathering Storm. So Gathering Storm is a talent that whenever you spend runes during Ross Winter, you do two things. You increase its damage and its duration. And the neat little thing is that if you increase the duration enough, you can press Remorseless Winter again keep all the damage increase stacks and get a new kind of full uh, duration on it. This is a big increase, like a huge increase, and you should do it whenever you can. You kind of need to have haste buffs going, so generally during blood loss you can do it, Remorse's Winter allows you to do it, that kind of thing. Whenever you can do it, try and do it. Furthermore, we have the Everfrost talent. This puts a debuff on enemies that increases the damage you do on them with Remorse's Winter. This is much easier to keep up, but it does require you to press Remorse Winter as soon as it comes up again. Another reason to just have Remorse Winter as like one of your highest priority buttons, because that should just be pressed ASAP, because if you don't, you're going to lose out on these buff. You can see there, 
I should have pressed Remorse Winter, but I didn't. And I lost the Everfrost buff debuff on the boss. Mistake. Even during Pillar Windows, even on single target, you need to press Remorse Winter. Okay, cool. This boss, we can use uh, Death Group really nicely. Get some nice value grouping everything up together. Easy peasy. We obviously get some nice cleave of these guys, so I'm going to be putting down my Death K, making sure I cleave with my obliterates. That gives you a ton of damage. You can use AMS to stack these on top of each other without dying. Good tip. Ideally use AMS before you walk in. That allows you to actually take no damage at all, just immune set. If you walk in and then use AMS, it's going to be ticking down, unfortunately. All right, there we have a proper Ross Winter Refresh. I don't like how these ads, they kind of like far away from the center of the boss, which means that when I hit Howling Blast on the boss, it actually doesn't hit the ads. <laughs> Same thing with uh, cleaving obliterates. How it works there is that you actually want to cleave off the ads because the boss has a much bigger hitbox. It will actually hit the boss even if it doesn't do it the other way around. So there you go. Anyway, we're going to become big guys, get some nice obliterates, going to uh, pad up our overall hair. How big are they? 2.3 million ones. I think I had another pillar window here. <laughs> Let's see how high we can go. Mate, I completely didn't see that I got that. Anyway, there we go. 3.7 million obliterates. Anyway, lots of rambling, lots of information. Hopefully that's digestible to you guys. Helps you excel in the Mythos environment and play the Frost DK to its maximum level. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought about this video. Upload, download, consider subscribing. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.